Thank you so much for joining us today. We're delighted to welcome you to our Cost of Living webinar. My name is Laurie Cuthbert. I'm the Director of Fundraising, Marketing and Communications here at Kidney Care UK. I've been working in the charity sector for the last decade. Um, I'm passionate about reducing inequalities and improving equity of access. I'm delighted today to be joined by an expert panel. And a little later in the session, we'll be answering some questions that you might have. So look forward to that immensely. Um, we're going to be talking today about the cost of living and the impact it's having on the kidney community across the UK. So as well, in, as well as sharing some helpful advice and guidance to support you as the winter months approach, we'll also be underlining the existing direct support services that Kidney Care UK and our partner organisations provide, as well as talking you through the steps we have taken as the UK's leading patient support charity to provide additional support to our community during this hugely challenging period. I think it's really important for me at this point to reiterate that we're here to support anyone living with CKD and those that support them. So please do get in touch with us if you need help or if you just want to talk to us about your situation. Before we begin, I'd like to just run through a couple of housekeeping actions. Um, the session is being recorded. Um, the chat is for technical issues. So, for instance, if your sound isn't working, um, so please do use that function there. And we've got the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen, which you should all be able to see. Um, if you could just raise your hand to let me know that you can see what I could see. That is brilliant. Excellent. Thanks very much, guys. Um, and please do add questions to the, the Q&A. Um, but a gentle reminder that we won't be able today, I'm afraid, to answer any individual um, or specific questions. Next slide, please, Sophie. Uh, and the next one, please. So, very simply, Kidney Care UK is the UK's leading kidney patient support charity. We've been providing direct practical support for kidney patients and their families and carers since 1975. As simply put, our vision is that no one should face kidney disease alone, and our mission is to improve the quality of life for everyone affected by kidney disease. Every single year, we support thousands of patients through our range of services, and this year we'll give away hundreds of thousands of pounds in immediate hardship grants and financial support and advice to patients. We also provide hundreds of counselling sessions from our team of trained renal counsellors and these sessions are all delivered completely free to patients that need them and we directly support thousands of patients every single year directly in the community and in renal units through our 18 strong team of advocacy officers across the UK. Something that I think we need to do better at as an organisation is celebrating the fact that over the last decade we've invested nine and a half million pounds to improve care and services in the UK and 75% of the staff roles that we funded as an organisation have since been picked up by the NHS. Running in parallel to the direct support services we deliver, we tirelessly campaign for better services and support for people with CKD. And as you'll all be aware, this is more important than ever. Life can be crushingly difficult when you're coping with a long-term condition like kidney disease. This was true pre-COVID, pre-cost of living, but the pandemic and now the cost of living crisis have made things acutely difficult and in many cases, much, much harder. CKD is exhausting and can be stressful for patients, their carers and families and loved ones, and it affects ability to work, creating financial pressures and impacts mental wellbeing. And as you'd expect, therefore, demand for our existing services, such as advocacy in the community, our renal counselling, financial grants for patients facing immediate crisis and those on low incomes, as well as our holiday and short break grants is increasing, is increasing month on month due to the cost of living crisis. And naturally, as we raise greater awareness about the cost of living more generally, we're anticipating that demand will rise further, rise further. So again, please do contact us and reach out if you need support or if you just would like somebody to speak to. And in terms of our response to the cost of living crisis, that's what we're here to talk about today. But very simply, as I said earlier, it is disproportionately impacting people living with chronic kidney disease. And as we'll explain in greater detail shortly, we realised at the beginning of the year when the war in the Ukraine and the energy crisis began to unfold, that we had to do more to support our extraordinarily resilient community who were facing increasingly difficult and often impossible choices. And it is driving greater inequalities that sadly existed pre-COVID and pre-cost of living. Next slide, please, Sophie. Um, so at this point, I'm really pleased to introduce our wonderful panel today. Um, so Laura from Citizens Advice North Yorkshire, over to you. 
Hi everyone, my name is Laura and I am Head of Energy and Social Welfare at Citizens Advice North Yorkshire. So Citizens Advice tends to be um, a very well known organisation, it's perhaps less, less known that we are a charity um, and that our funding is dependent on a number of different sources. Um, Citizens Advice is made up of hundreds of individual local offices and I come from the one in North Yorkshire and my role is to lead our energy and welfare benefits teams. So what we excel at at Citizens Advice is giving holistic advice um, to improve a client's situation. We're all about empowering clients to know their rights and their choices and to, and to then decide on their own next steps, assisting them where that might be needed. So how that translates into my team, um, my, both of my teams, as can be expected, are extremely busy at the moment with the cost of living crisis. Um, the energy team has a particular focus on lifting people out of fuel poverty. And that is as everything at Citizens Advice done holistically. So if they come to us for a fuel voucher or for financial support with their bills, we will look at everything, their whole situation to see how we might be able to help them, whether that's helping them with a PIP claim, um, checking their benefit entitlement, checking for um, eligible grants that they might be able to get. Um, and we can then refer clients into any one of our specialist teams that we're lucky to have in North Yorkshire, including um, family discrimination, employment, welfare benefits, debt and money advice. Um, it's become increasingly important to be looking at benefit entitlement at the moment and um, with the cost of living crisis. So that's something that um, I have a particular interest in and expertise in having been a welfare benefits rights advisor in the past. Um, so I'm really looking forward to answering your questions and seeing how we can help today. Thanks so much, Laura. I had to remember to unmute myself there, even after two and a half years. It's wonderful to have you. Uh, Mark Smith is also joining us. So, Mark, um, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Laurie. Um, as Laurie said, my name's Mark Smith. I'm the Business Development Manager for Auriga Services. And I've got about 22 years experience in money, debt and, and welfare benefits advice. I originally worked in local authority setting. And in 2015, I moved to the my, my company uh, where I am now, Auriga Services. And just a little bit about Auriga Services for, for those you may not have heard of us. Um, we're, a, we're a public benefit entity, so we're not for profit, and we're owned by Seven Trent Waters Charitable Trust Fund. Um, and in 2015, Auriga um, set up uh, a money advice team, very similar to the, the, the service that Laura described there from, from, from the Citizens Advice Bureau. Um, it was quite exciting for me to be able to move to, to Auriga, um, and more so to get to work with kidney patients. So traditionally, Auriga had all had, had administered trust funds, so you know, Seven Trent Waters Charitable Trust Fund, uh, United Utilities Charitable Trust Fund in the water sector, energy trust funds, and we still do to this day, and we administer about a quarter of a million pounds a week in, in charitable funding. And we also administer a number of social tariffs, particularly in, in, in the water sector. But from 2015 onwards, we, we started to grow and develop our, our money advice and, and, and the debt team. And we began working in two, 2016 with the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and the kidney patients there. And that really opened my eyes to the difficulties that kidney patients face um, on a daily basis. And since 2017, we've been working quite closely in partnership with Kidney Care UK. Um, we, we sometimes pick up some of the more complex benefit cases that maybe need to go to tribunal or some of the more difficult issues around, around debt and, and problems with money advice. And I think we really have really gleaned a real a strong understanding of the challenges that kidney patients face and of course the cost of living crisis and what's you know and what we're facing currently it's really really impacting on on on, on the kidney community probably more so than any community that i work with really so we're we're quite excited and and and, and proud almost to be working with kidney care uk to be supporting supporting patients um so hopefully we can really grow grow this partnership and grow the work that we do um, and hopefully today answer some of your questions and maybe have a few tips and a little bit of advice how, how you can you know possibly attempt to navigate this difficult period um, with the support of kidney care and, and hopefully um, possibly ourselves as, as well. Thank you Laurie. Thanks so much Mark and I think it, it's, it's really important for me to say as well that this partnership um, that, that we have with Ariga is, is quite transformational 
transformational to the patients that are being supported. And, and I think on average, Mark, I'm right in saying that through our um, through our partnership, we're able to, we've been able to realize more than two million pounds in previously unclaimed benefits for, for the kidney community. Yeah, yeah ab ab absolutely, Laurie. Um, and I think there are there's a lot of myths around welfare benefits in particular, and people and patients don't think they're entitled, maybe because they're working part time or they're in their own home. And this partnership, we've really been able to identify unclaimed benefits for patients and then actually help fill the forms out to, 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 to realise the income. Because um, one thing I get identifying it, but of course, when you're faced with a 40 page form or, you know, or, or a, you know, a, a telephone interview that you're quite nervous about or even a face to face interview, giving the patients that support can help them navigate the system because it is an entitlement at the end of the day. You know, patients are entitled to this support. And so the partnership we've built has been transformational. Hopefully, you know, we get to help more patients, you know, in, in, the, upcoming, in the upcoming months and years. Thanks ever so much, Mark. And uh, without further ado, and Beth uh, is joining us from Anglian Water. Beth, would you like to introduce yourself and, uh, and say a few words, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks, Laurie. If I could just have my slide, please. Um, I'll just start by saying thank you so much for having me. And I'm genuinely delighted to spend a few minutes with you this evening talking through our partnership with Kidney Care UK. So as Laurie mentioned, my name is Beth. I'm the Customer Services Partnership Manager at Anglian Water. And essentially my role exists to make sure that we're providing an inclusive and accessible service to all of the customers that we serve and that our customers know about the various support services that we have available. And we're incredibly proud to be the first utility company to work in partnership with the fantastic organization that is Kidney Care UK. And I'm gonna run through some of the reasons why this partnership is so important with you this evening. Next slide, please. When we began to look into the amount of customers living with CKD in the Anglian Water region, we knew that something needed to be done. The prevalence of the condition in our region presents a vast opportunity to build awareness about the support that we can provide to our most vulnerable customers through this partnership. There are approximately 870,000 people that are living with CKD in the Anglian Water region. And of that, almost 10,000 patients have been transplanted or are on dialysis. We want to know if any of our customers are living with this chronic condition, because having visibility of our customers' needs means that we can offer them some additional support, whether that be through our priority services register, which means we can tailor the services that we provide to better suit our customers' needs. So for example, if a customer's on home dialysis, if the worst is gonna happen and there's an interruption to their water supply, we will proactively let them know and ask if they need anything from us. But equally, the financial assistance as well. So we understand the impact of the cost of living crisis and what's that's having on many of us, but in particular, those customers living with CKD. So I just want to stress that if any of our customers are finding it hard to pay, we're here and we want to help. Next slide, please. Throughout our partnership with Kidney Care UK, we're hoping to increase awareness of support available for people living with CKD. We want to encourage more of our customers living with the condition to sign up to our priority services register. We want to promote financial assistance to customers who may be struggling to pay. We want to raise awareness of what choices our customers have when it comes to dialysing at home. And through doing this, we really hope to give our customers choice on their treatment. For example, if there's a concern around being able to afford their bills if they was to choose to go on home dialysis, making sure that our customers know the financial assistance available from us as their water provider, should they want to take the step to do that. And essentially, and, and kind of to conclude, we want to make it easier for our customers to access the various support available from both ourselves and Kidney Care UK. Next slide, please. So we're six months into our partnership so far and we're already making a difference. So I'm gonna talk through just a couple of bits that we've already done. Next slide, please. Kidney Care UK have delivered a lunch and learn for our staff for us to better understand what it means to be living with CKD. We know the importance of reducing barriers and ensuring that our customers can easily access support. And that's why we've created a bespoke partnership phone line for our customers who are living with CKD. And when they call this number, 
they get straight through to our specialist priority services team. And they've been trained by Kidney Care UK on the impact that CKD can have on an individual. Having the privilege of visiting renal units firsthand, I've seen how much information on services available really means to our customers. There's that phrase, you don't know what you don't know. And that is, it really rings true, particularly when I've spoken to a lot of our customers. And I'm incredibly grateful to have had the chance to have some of those conversations and to meet the customers that we're trying to support with this partnership, understanding firsthand from them what they need from us as their water provider has been incredibly powerful. The partnership has meant that a lot more of our customers living with CKD have been made aware of the priority services register and supported to sign up, as well as access financial support, for example, our discounted tariffs. And there's so much more to come with our partnership. We've already identified opportunities to work with NHS trusts across our region to make utility support information easier for patients to access. We're incredibly proud to be the first utility company to work with Kidney Care UK. And I want to urge anyone watching this who may be living with CKD, if you are supplied by us, please reach out to us as your water provider. Let us know your circumstance and see if we can help you. But also remember your other utility companies can offer you support as well, whether that be your gas, electric, or perhaps you're not an Anglian Water customer and you live somewhere else in England or in the UK. Reach out and make sure you're benefiting from all the support that's available. Equally, I really hope we can pave the way for more utility companies to follow suit, working with Kidney Care UK, doing the right thing to support our mutual customers living with chronic kidney disease. Thanks, Laurie, back to you. Thanks so much, Beth. And I wonder at this point, Beth, if you could just um, to let everybody in attendance know some of the other benefits that come with being on the PSR. I mean, there's the obvious financial assistance and support, such as discounted tariffs, but practically um, being on the PSR, um, whoever supplies your water or your gas electricity means that you are forewarned of any disruption. That's right, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So I would say kind of the most, the most um, prevalent support service is that proactive contact in the event of an interruption to your water supply and if you think about it in relation to a customer on dialysis if they're on home dialysis and they are mid-treatment and their electric goes off or their water goes off that could be detrimental what we want to do is we want to be aware of our customers in that circumstance who do dialyze at home so we can be more proactive with our approach as do the electric companies but it's about multiple different support services and tailoring that to best suit our customers needs so it could be um, something as simple as knock and wait a support service which means that should we visit our customers property and they need a little bit of extra time to get to the door maybe they've just come off eight hours of dialysis and to be honest they're struggling we'll wait that little bit longer and make sure that they don't feel they have to rush to get to the door Equally, utility companies might be the last thing that they want to deal with at the moment. If they want to nominate a trusted friend or family member to manage their account on their behalf, Priority Services enables them to do that. But that's just a couple of examples. We really do have a vast range of Priority Services. And what I will do is I'll pop the link in the chat. So if you do want to have a look at some of the additional support services we offer, you can check them out on our website. Thanks so much, Beth. And if you look in the chat as well, the team, uh, um are included links to details on how you can register with PSR in your region. So please, I would really encourage all of you to, to look at those links and just find out about the support that it already exists. And of course, what's really exciting about these kind of partnerships is that it's not just a single solution. We can provide support, as I said earlier, around um, patients facing financial crisis, perhaps you would like somebody to speak to, or perhaps there's somebody in the community that can help you through our advocacy team. So please do reach out um, because we are here to help. Next slide, please, Sophie. So I said earlier that today we'd be exploring some of the specific impacts that the cost of living crisis has had um, on the kidney community. I'm sure many of you will be aware that three and a half million people in the UK have chronic kidney disease and about a million more people are estimated to live with the condition undiagnosed. 
this is a huge, huge number. Um, approximately 3 million people in the UK have cancer. And I think one of the things that as an organization we're really trying to do is raise more awareness about what it means to have kidney disease um, and some of the challenges that presents and the cost of living crisis, as I said earlier, is really disproportionately impacting um, the kidney community's ability to do the things that perhaps some of us might otherwise take for granted. I mean, you can see on the slide here that many people with kidney disease also have anemia. So they feel the cold much more acutely. And this will increase household utility consumption quite above and beyond what it might cost to have your dialysis at home. And we hear from an increasing number of people that those choices between heating and eating have, 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 have almost become a cost of surviving. Rising fuel costs also mean that if you pay to go to dialysis in a unit, which is roughly 312 journeys every year for those traveling to and from units three times per week, you'll be paying considerably more than you were this time last year. Um, and again, significant numbers of kidney patients are unable to work. So just one in four dialysis patients are in any form of employment and almost half of the total number live in the two most deprived percentiles of society. Now in 2019, this figure was 44%. And in 2020, this has risen to 47%. So even pre-cost of living, these inequalities were really being played out. And we know that in times of financial crisis, inequalities and variation of care and equity of access to treatment will, will really become more challenging. And I'm sure many of you in attendance today will have participated in our cost of living survey. We had over a thousand responses and 83% of everyone who replied told us that they were worried about how they're going to cope this winter. And 54% of that number told us that they were very worried. And we'll be releasing the report on that survey very, very soon. And of course, what will run in parallel um, to financial crises is, is, is often a mental health crisis, which is why we launched this year our psychosocial manifesto which is calling for 10 powerful recommendations for the improvement of care provided for all people living with CKD. And I'm sure the team will put up the link um, to that manifesto in due course. I, and I really urge you to read the, um, the page on that. And um, this again is more important than ever. And we'll be working tirelessly to make sure that the recommendations in that manifesto are heard at a parliamentary and government level and at a policy level and implemented as appropriate where possible. Next slide, please. So what are we doing? We've, we've heard a little bit from our partner organisations um, about the support they're providing. I think it's really important to draw attention to some of the activities that we've been doing as a result of, of really recognising that we needed to do more to support the community at this critical time. So we'd already as an organisation secured NHS commitment for transport costs to and from dialysis, and we continue to ensure that those policies are implemented consistently, regardless of where in the UK people live. Um, the NHS England is already taking action to ensure that trusts provide consistent reimbursement for patients receiving the dialysis at home. And this is something that we will continue to push and ensure is implemented consistently. Um, we've also just today uh, launched our benefits calculator, um, as well as a benefits and financial hub. And I would urge all of you in attendance to please familiarise familiarize yourselves with that. Go through the benefits calculator. Um, and if you need additional support or help with that, please do call us or send us an email. And again, our existing patient support services. We've been providing patients with food and fuel vouchers, with patient grants, with advocacy support in the community and with free renal counselling, because we recognise at a time when the NHS is facing really severe pressures, things like advocacy and mental health support is so, so critical. And I'm pleased to say as well that we've really gained significant media and political interest as a result of our Priced Out of Existence campaign, which I'm sure some of you will have seen launch earlier this year. Um, this was raised directly by Sir Keir Starmer at Prime Minister's Question Time. And support for people on dialysis was mentioned on Good Morning Britain by Boris Johnson. And actually, subsequently to that, he followed up with us um, so his team could investigate, which has led to regular meetings with the Department for Health and Social Care. Um, we have secured a really, really huge amount of donations from our generous donors, and that money is absolutely critical for us to sustain and advance our direct support services. Beth mentioned our existing partnership with Anglian Water and that dedicated phone line 
um, that anybody living with CKD in the Anglian water supply region can call up. You do not go through a computerized system that is answered by a human being. Uh, and I can say that, can I, Beth, because I did the training with your team. Um, and it was so affirming to hear that that is already having a tangible impact. And just like last week, we heard from a kidney patient, a customer of Anglian water, that they've already secured a 50% reduction on their water bills. And I think it's important for me to say at this point, Beth, that these provisions and these systems are in place with all of the suppliers across the UK. But one of the challenges has been that historically, utility firms have not been necessarily as proactive as they could have been in promoting them. Would you say that's fair? I think it's fair to a certain extent. And I, I also think the biggest challenge is making sure that our customers can see about the support that we've got available and um, if you take um, our partnership for example we're taking a true multi-channel approach we are being present in renal units we are utilizing digital channels such as email website social media we're looking at letter drops in partnership with the ccgs across our region but even then we're going to miss customers and it's about trying to work together as a unit to make sure that we're delivering all of these messages of support in a a, a unified way and Laura said a, a very key word earlier in a holistic approach to better supporting our customers and I think one of the biggest challenges utility companies is getting the message to our customers and it's through utilizing um, trusted voices in the community trusted partners like yourselves Laurie at Kidney Care UK that's ultimately going to better support our customers and that's why I, I suppose just to urge if, if there are any other utility companies on this webinar um, to explore that as an option because I can safely say from an Anglian Water perspective within the first six months we've seen significant progress and we're very excited to see what more there is to come with our partnership. And I think that's just it Beth isn't it there isn't a silver bullet for how to communicate with with everyone in the UK and, and what we're finding when we do our drop-in sessions at renal units um, in the region and I've been doing them across the country and across the UK I was over in Belfast a couple of weeks ago visiting the children's dialysis unit is that every single customer has a different way of engaging um, or not engaging as sometimes the case may be because as you say that there is a lack of awareness about what support is available and i think what's really exciting about working with big utility providers is that we can provide a really comprehensive package of support it's not just going on the psr it's not necessarily just getting financial support from your supplier but if you need support to actually discuss this with the supplier, we can help for our advocacy team. As I said, we provide financial grants as well. So it's that range of services um, that we provide and our partner organisations provide that I think can really make that tangible difference in perpetuity. Um, Laura, Mark, at this point, I, I just wanted to ask you if um, if you've got any tangible examples of, of kind of of areas of, of development or increased in demand and what that's meant for you both as, as organisations. Uh, Mark, you've come off mute. Do you want to come in here? Yes, uh, th thank you, Laurie. Um, I think our mantra has always been, even before the crisis, to try and reduce household expenditure and increase income. And I think that's never been as important now. So maybe even families who were managing even a few months ago are really finding it hard to meet all the, ex all the essential expenditure. And as we know, kidney patients, you know, have, have far greater heating costs and often dietary requirements and some, some self-care requirements. So the demand for us has been how can we reduce or at least mitigate household expenditure at, at, at the moment? Um, and it's difficult. I mean, I, I've been telling people to look through the direct debits. You know, have they got have they got gym memberships or, or, or direct debits for things that they don't use? Um, We've also been sort of looking at insurances and not necessarily things you should maybe think about. Uh, a patient I was working with last week, he was paying £70 a month for, for pet insurance. And he went and did a, 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 a comparison and he's now only paying £30 a month. So I think we always think with insurances, it's car insurance and things like that. But I think you need to look at really every direct debit because savings can be made. Um, and I think the example of pet insurance is a good one because that's maybe not something that necessarily springs, springs, springs to mind. And I've had a couple of patients recently as well who, who live alone and they weren't claiming the 25% single person discount on the council tax. Now, if you think the average council tax bill's nearly got £1,800 now, that's a significant saving. Um, so uh, the, the main demand we've been getting at the moment is how can 
patients reduce expenditure. And we've got quite a few little tips like that. And, and there too, that spring to mind that I've, I've helped patients with recently. Thanks so much, Mark. And I think, <clears throat> I, think you, I think you've hit the nail on the head there in terms of, you know, looking at the bigger picture. And, and I know one of the things that we often find as a charity is just un until you've spoken to someone, it can be really hard to actually have that perspective. Um, and I, I certainly see that every day when, when we were in uh, Northampton, Beth, two, three weeks ago, we spoke to, se to several patients who were simply unaware that they might even be entitled to be reimbursed for their travel to and from units. And so it, it's working in the round as a patient support charity to really raise awareness about the provision that does exist. Um, Laura, um, I don't know if you wanted to, to come in here, if you've got anything to add. I mean, for everyone who is delivering frontline services at the moment, I'm sure that they've seen an absolutely unprecedented increase in demand. Um, we were talking about this last week that during the pandemic um, calls to our free phone advice line, um, they went up to about 200 a week, which at the time we felt was, well, that, that's a lot. And um, actually during the cost of living crisis in the last last year or so, it's gone up to 600 <coughs> to 700 per week. And during the pandemic, you couldn't have you couldn't have foreseen this happening afterwards um, and the, the subsequent increase in demand. Um, so everyone in the frontline services, I'm sure, is, is building up capacity for the coming winter and, and how we can help our clients in the most holistic way possible. Um, in terms of clients that we're seeing at the moment, um, the, the energy team is concentrating on making sure that they are that our clients are aware of their rights. Um, we've already talked about entitlements, um, and I think it's a really good way, word to use, entitlement, and I deliberately use that with my clients because you are entitled to claim these, these benefits or, and or this support. But also in terms of energy, it's really important to let people know there are quite stringent standards that energy companies have to comply with. They're called um, standard license conditions, um, especially for people who are vulnerable and are medically dependent on energy. There are rules that the energy companies have to follow. Um, and I would say anyone who has medical equipment, which is reliant on an energy supply, should absolutely should not be on a prepayment meter um, because it's neither safe nor practicable for, for them to be on a prepayment meter for their energy. So just knowing things like that, that they've got a right to ask to be um, moved to a credit meter, that they've got a right to ask for additional support um, vouchers for their, if they are on a prepayment meter. And that's exactly what organisations like Citizens Advice are there for, to raise awareness of this and to help them assert those rights and claim those entitlements to make things ever so slightly easier over the coming months. Yeah, thanks very much, Laura. Um, <clears throat> Sophie, could you um, go on to the next slide, please? And I think I think on that note, just building on the the input there from the from the panel, um, is you know what are we calling for? What are we doing as a patient support organisation to make sure that equity is improved and that access to the best possible care um, for patients is is actually implemented consistently? So very simply. NHS trusts need to have a straightforward, accessible system in place to ensure that all of those, particularly those on home dialysis, are pro promptly and consistently reimbursed for the additional costs of their utilities. So these systems should be in place across all UK nations and for all modes of home dialysis. But it's sadly still the case that this does not happen consistently, which creates further inequalities, can drive disadvantage and, and variation in care, and this has to change. Um, I'm really pleased to say that um, we wrote to every clinical director and ask them what their approach was to reimbursing the cost of home dialysis. And, and already a couple of trusts have, have come back to us and we're working alongside them to develop a system that is universally consistent in their areas, um, which will really provide a, a much better um, reimbursement for those receiving care. Um, across the UK, people are required to travel to and from hospital for life-sustaining dialysis up to three times a week. Uh, and they need to have timely and sufficient reimbursement for fuel cost or access to free and reliable patient transport. And um, while this is part now of something that should happen consistently, sadly it doesn't. And again, we will be campaigning tirelessly to make sure that the policy is implemented. Also, people on home dialysis need energy protection so that their energy supplies will not be cut off. And we've written to Ofgem, the energy regulator, to ask for this assurance. Um, we're also going to be asking for additional support for energy bills for people using medical equipment at home. Um, this might become something like a social tariff for energy to be developed to provide ongoing support 
for vulnerable groups. We're also asking the government to consider recommendations from the Work and Pensions Committee to close the gap between the inflation reference point and uprating benefits so that those benefits are better able to cover existing costs of living. Um, and as Beth rightly said earlier, we're calling on all energy and utility companies to work with us to ensure that kidney patients in particular are supported and are on the best possible tariff for their needs. Um, at this point, guys, we've had we've had several questions come in. Um, so I'd really like to uh, to invite the panel um, to come forward and we'll, we'll do our best to answer some of them. Um, a couple of questions we received ahead of time. Um, which I'm sure we'll have lots of in, insight and, and feedback on is what more can be done to help with the rising living costs? They think, I, would, I, I don't know if you can bring up the next slide, that would be great. So what more can be done to help with, with rising living costs? I think, again, I, I would use this as an opportunity to stress the support that we can provide. So please do get in touch with us um, if you're looking for advice if, or, or if you'd like to just take the, the benefits calculator on our website as per the link that was posted in the, um, the chat earlier. And also I'd urge you to, to go to our um, benefits and welfare hub and also our cost of living hub because there's a huge amount of information on that which I'm sure will help. Um, Beth, Laura, Mark. Um, Mark, you gave some, some practical examples earlier. Beth, Laura, anything in particular that you would stress here? Um, in terms of what my one tip or action is, I think I'd really lean into um, checking your benefit entitlements. Um, so it, it's, it's, it, you say, it says one tip, but being, innate, being entitled and claiming a means tested benefit can passport you to so much help. Quite often, income related ESA or universal credit is your gateway to more help. I've noticed in the chat, people are asking about travel costs. If most of the time, if you are in receipt of universal credit and you earn less than a certain amount in your assessment period, you can claim back those travel costs. Um, there's things like warm home discount is going to entitle you to um, social tariffs, not just on water and, and um, other things, but a broadband and telephone. Um, people don't know that if they claim universal credit, you might be able to get your internet for as cheap as 15 pounds. If anyone, um, does one thing after this webinar go and check your benefit entitlement because it's not just the money you get in your pocket it is everything else that it passports you to it will open the door to so much more support whether it's right that you need to have a means tested benefit to access this support is not for me to answer right now but um everyone no matter how much income you have in your house in your household do you use your, that benefit calculator and if you want tailored support you have a complex benefit situation say more than one household living in the same property contact your local citizens advice because we've got um trained welfare benefit specialists who can help you brilliant thanks so much Laura. and beth i know you want to come in there yeah i think just to follow up absolutely agree with everything that laura said i that we know that there's going to be an awful lot of our customers that's going to go from just about managing the increase in October pushing many people to crisis point please if you're struggling reach out to us as your water provider if we're your supplier we offer a really vast range of financial assistance and something that Laura said around benefit maximization is actually something that we do in-house and as far as I'm aware we're one of the only if not the only utility company who does in-house benefit maximization so if you reach out to us want to get added to the priority services register want to see if you're entitled to any of our discounted tariffs we run through something called an extra care assessment with you it'll take no longer than 10-15 minutes if you do it on the phone or you can access it online on our website and it just means that we will go through your water account and make sure that you're benefiting from all of the support we can provide you with but we will also then see if we can enhance your overall financial situation signposting any unclaimed benefits looking at any additional practical um, support services available for example blue badges perhaps if you didn't know that you could claim one of those or equally signposting to our partners so people like kidney care uk and um, so i suppose in, in terms of one tip I would say not all utility companies are bad. And I know that's um, probably quite a difficult message to deliver at the moment when you're looking at um, some of the headlines. But just remember that many of us are here to help. And if you're finding it difficult, if you're struggling, please reach out and talk to us because there's always there's always something that we can do to help you. Thanks so much. And, and Mark? Yes, uh, thank you, Laurie. Um, just staying on the benefits theme, um, 
there are as well the non-means tested benefits. So, so for paediatrics, it's still disability living allowance. For, for, for sort of working age adults, it's PIP. And for those of pensionable age, it's attendance allowance. And the beauty of these three benefits is it doesn't matter what your income is. So even if you are working or your partner's working and even earning maybe quite a reasonable income or you own your own home, we've got a little bit of savings. The non-means tested benefits are all about the difficulties you have in daily life, self-care, getting around, preparing a meal. And I think there's a bit of a misconception that because maybe you have got a, you know, a little bit of earned income or your partner works, that you won't qualify for these benefits. And, you know, there's so many kidney patients I, I've gone to see at units and they hadn't claimed personal independence payment because they didn't think they were entitled to it because the partner worked and we've got, we've got them the money and that, that income has made such a difference to, the, to their lives. So even if you don't qualify for any means tested benefits, looking for the non means tested benefits, because as the, I mean, the best example is sort of can a child's could claim attendance allowance. You know, it doesn't matter what you've got in terms of, in, in, in terms of savings. Um, and the other thing I would say is see what support your local authority have got. So, you know, the household support fund was, was, was 500 million pound distributed to, to, to local authorities in, in England and the devolved, the devolved governments. And, is administered by each each council. So go on your council website, or you know, if you're not IT savvy, see if you can get a friend or relative to go on for you. There's discretionary support out there. Every council is a bit different, um, a bit the same way. You know, every kidney patient's a little bit different, and things affect them differently. Um, every council is different, so you know, you might be able to get something discretionary support from your local authority. It might be a one-off grant. It might be a little bit of ongoing support. It might be help in the emergency. Um, but I think you've really got to look look at all avenues at, at, at the moment to really tr to, to try and mitigate this expenditure. Um, so they're the, probably the two the two things I'd say uh, just just to top and tail that one, uh, Laurie. Yeah, thanks so much, Mark. And I think that's so important to stress is that um, <clears throat> one of the things that we 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 see and hear every day is is that feeling of 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 sometimes hopelessness, but also that feeling of where to start. And I'd really, again, reiterate my point that if you do need support, even trying to navigate what to do first, please do send us an email, write us a letter, pick up the phone, because we will be able to support whether that's directly in the community or whether that's one of our, our team at head office who can talk you through kind of some practical advice to signpost you in the right direction, um, because there is always something that could be done. Um, even to a, to a simple thing, you know, like perhaps your cooker is broken. Or your washing machine is broken you know we, we have a household grant program and we may be able to help you um to secure a more efficient washing machine cooker etc which can which sounds like a small thing but actually can make a huge difference and just on that note um when we're talking about tips and actions we'll soon be launching a, a really affordable and delicious range of our kidney kitchen recipes so these will be meals that can be cooked for for people in a family very very affordably because we recognize that when we talk about food and diet and the importance of diet and maintaining a healthy kidney function sometimes that can feel out of out of reach for people and so that's one of the reasons why we we started the kidney kitchen was to, to give kidney patients permission to enjoy food again and we recognized that during this really really difficult period we needed to have a range of much more affordable recipes that can be enjoyed by patients and their families and friends to reduce feelings of anxiety or, or isolation if you are having to eat a separate meal to perhaps your, fa your family or your children and so it's, this, it's really important that we continue to signpost and communicate the existing support that is available. I think one of the things I've noticed from, from the Q&A and from the chat is that there's a feeling of, of overall frustration about what should happen with what happens in reality. And I think you could probably apply that. I think it's fair to say this isn't a panel, you know, across the benefit system and entitlement is that everybody has a slightly different understanding of, of, of what they're entitled to. And sometimes that conversation has to be reset. You know, entitled is the key word. And I think what I would urge is everybody who's, who's finding that kind of reimbursement piece in terms of home dialysis um, or transport costs, we want to hear from you because we can't help unless we know what is going on in your area. And so please do write to us and our policy team will, will take on that case because the more we hear about these variations or inequalities, the more we can act on it and try to change things for the better. Um, I think that there's, there's another question that the team might be able to answer, answer here, Mark, in particular, perhaps you have some advice on this, is um, uh, if you rent 
can, can your landlord claim benefits on your behalf? Well, you, if, if you rent from a private landlord, you, your landlord himself can't, can't claim benefits. I mean, I don't know if, if, if the question's more around um, heating measures and insulation measures. So there is pots of money out there, eco schemes um, for private landlords. So they can apply for things like loft insulation, cavity wall, boilers, you know, uh, so even if you don't own your home, speak to your landlord, because if, especially if it's a private landlord, because there is pots of funding that they can access. I mean, in terms of if you, if you rent from a private landlord, you'd be looking at getting your housing costs primarily through universal credit or, or if you're a pensioner through, through housing benefit, but you'd be looking at claiming those, those yourself. Um, and again, council tax reduction. So, you know, every local authority has got their own council tax reduction scheme. And if you are on a low income, you know, apply to your local authority to reduce, you know, to, to, to reduce your council tax. But the majority of financial benefits you, you claim yourself, but physical measures such as insulation, speak to your landlord, because they may be able to claim um, to, 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 to make your home more, you know, economical and cost effective to heat. Thanks, Mark. That's, that's really, really helpful to understand. And, um, Laura, I just wonder, you know, are there any kind of practical examples that you could share of, you know, um, clients calling up and, and, and and, and finding actually quite a simple solution where on the surface, it was a really challenging case. Um, specifically regarding yeah. private rented or just, just in general? I think in general, you know, particularly around the benefits and entitlement piece, you know. Yeah, actually all through this, I've been thinking about one particular case. Um, it was a client um, who on the face of it had a fairly good, uh, relatively good income. I think it was about, £40,000 per year to live with a partner. She had um, four children and uh, her partner had a health condition and she was absolutely convinced. She rang us for a fuel voucher um, for a prepayment meter because they were, had self-disconnected because they couldn't afford to top up their prepayment meter. And she was absolutely sure she was not entitled to any benefits or any support. And the advisor, God bless her, she, um, she kept pushing and saying, let me just do a benefit check for you. Let's see, let's just see if um, you might be entitled to something. And she was entitled to 14,000 pounds of universal credit over the year. Um, and that is a transformable amount of money for somebody. She, the client cried on the phone because she just could not believe that she was entitled. And she had said, oh, I've checked in the past and, uh, you know, we earn £40,000, how can we possibly be entitled? Um, and it sim the simple answer is, because well, it was because she had um, four children and rented, so her total amount of universal credit was enough that um, she was entitled even with that earned income. Um, and there's quite a few people who contact us, and we do have almost like a magic wand for them. I, 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 I often have to say to my team, I don't have a magic wand for that client, I'm sorry. But for a vast majority of them, actually, there is something that we can do for them, um, whether it is finding that benefit entitlement or indeed applying for a grant for loft insulation, just so that it is a little bit cheaper to, to heat the home. Um, so I wish I could have a magic wand for everybody, but there's ones that we do. It is immensely satisfying to be able to have changed someone's life like that. And I, I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head there, Laura, you know, when, when I've been doing drop-in clinics at, at renal units, it's, it's often that people simply thought they weren't entitled to anything more or weren't eligible. And actually in conversations, it, it's been revealed that actually there's an awful lot more we could be doing to help them, whether that's simple things like providing community support, or whether that's just giving them the direct line to speak to our, our team about, about a hardship grant. Um, these are things that all exist and it's why sessions like this are so important so we can talk about them in the round and really signpost the support that, um, that is available. Um, I think we probably have time for, for one more question. Um, so guys, unless you've got another tip, I think I'll move on to that, that question, but I think you've, you've covered things really nicely there on the panel. Um, so we've had a question here about um, uh, transplant patients um, <clears throat> and this particular attendee has had a transplant um, and is asking about how to get support. I think for this particular question the answer is really really straightforward. We're here for everyone with kidney disease, whether, whether the people have had transplants, whether they're waiting for transplants, whether they're on dialysis or whether they've just been diagnosed. So please get in touch with us and we will provide as much support as we possibly can. Um, 
conscious of time, everyone. Sophie, if possible to move on to the next slide, please. So I think we've we've touched on, on many of the resources and support that's available, but I think really important to, to, to summarize the, the, the support that does already exist. Um, please do visit our online support hubs. As I said earlier, there is a wealth of information available on them. And whether that's things like taking a benefits calculator um, or just picking up the phone to speak to us, there'll be lots of information there that will point you in the right direction. Again, I'll point to our direct patient support services such as advocacy, free counselling, hardship support. Please do get in touch with us and we will find a way to help. Uh, the priority services register, Beth has talked to this point as well, but this is not just about um, being forewarned about water disruption or energy disruption. Um, this is fundamentally a, a way to get yourself in contact with your supplier and they will be able to signpost the most appropriate tariffs, other support that is available, whether that's financial or whether the supplier can point them in direction of um, citizens advice, for instance. Um, and patient information packs, we have, a, we have a huge range of information quite aside from our cost of living hubs and our finance hubs on the website, so please do visit um, our website, which is just kidneycareuk.org. Um, and finally, how can you help? So last slide, please, Sophie. So please do tell us what you need. Um, how can we help you? The more you tell us, the more you share, um, the more we will be able to support you. Um, amplify, I think, raise awareness with your friends, with your family, with your community about kidney disease. I think comparative to other long-term conditions and other chronic conditions, very little is known um, about chronic kidney disease, but as we've seen today, it is acutely challenging and the treatment is often relentless, particularly when you approach renal failure. So please do share some of those challenges and, and, and awareness about the condition. Um, and again, share your experiences. We're always looking for people to, to speak to the media or local MPs or nationally about those experiences. And when we talk about variation and things like reimbursement, again, if we don't know, it's harder for us to really tell your stories. Follow us on social media and, and share advice. So kidney friendly items to donate to your local food bank. That's a really great one. We heard from um, a particular patient uh, a few weeks ago that they were almost entirely reliant on food bank for, for, their, for their dietary requirements and 95% of the food they were being given was not suitable for them. And so, you know, please do visit our kidney kitchen, speak to the team about what items you know, might be suitable for a food bank um, and, and share advice because it, it's one of the best ways that you can really make a difference. And a, a quick reminder for me that there are, there are many ways for, for you all to support the charity, whether that's by donating clothes, donating stamps, taking part in an event for the charity, be it a sponsored walk, a marathon, a bake sale, um, hosting a charity raffle, really every single penny that we receive makes a direct impact on our ability to support more kidney patients across the UK. Um, as we receive no statutory funding, we are entirely reliant on that income to do more of what we do. Um, and, and just for me to summarise at the end of the session, really, um, we'll be sharing information about kidney friendly items to donate to food banks in the days ahead. Um, any questions we've not been able to answer today, um, we will we will reply um, and we'll cover in our write up of the session. And again, if you have very specific questions, please do get in touch with us, um, whether that's to the policy team or whether that's to the general comms at kidneycareuk.org um, email. Um, and please, again, get in touch. We can provide immediate financial support through our patient grants. Our advocacy service, which operates across the UK, they really do get it. Beth, you've seen firsthand the incredible Sandy at work across um, East Anglia. Um, every single one of our advocacy team is, is there to help. So if you need information or guidance, please do contact us. Um, again, our free counselling service is available for patients and their families, particularly um, if your renal, renal unit or trust doesn't have any counselling services available at present, or if there's a, a long wait time, please do reach out to us and we'll see if we can help. And again, please do visit our online support hubs. They're full of advice and information. Um, they'll help you reduce it, utility bills um, and they'll help you to shop for things like a kidney friendly diet on a budget. Um, thank you so much for attending all. I hope you found it helpful. 
thanks to the panel for joining. Um, we'll publish a recording of the session along with a report on the website in the next week. We'll continue to raise these issues with the media and policymakers and fight tirelessly for change. Um, and again, please do get in touch with us if you'd like to speak to us or the media about your experiences and how the cost of living crisis is impacting you. Thank you very, very much indeed.